Welcome and hello. This is a video tutorial in EPA SWIM. And in this lesson, I'm going to be discussing reporting results, event periods, running a simulation, and then debugging simulation errors. All right, let's go ahead and get started. What I have on the screen is the welcome screen, which may appear when you open up EPA SWIM for the first time. And if you don't, you can just access that by going up to help and then welcome screen. All right, I'm going to start by just using this sample project, Site Runoff Drainage, and then boom, it automatically just loads into my page just like that. And just to be safe, I'm going to go up to File, Save As, and then save this project into a different directory. Okay, I'm going to save it right here. It can have the same file name. That's fine. And click Save. So what I want to do first is click on Project over here to the left. This is the Project Browser tab. Then click on Options. Now what you're seeing down here are the different simulation options. We covered simulation options in the previous lesson. That's lesson seven. I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in that, where I cover general, dates, time steps, dynamic wave, and interface files. In this lesson, I'm going to finish things off here by talking about reporting results and event periods, as well as running a simulation, what you see on the screen, and then some of the common errors you may see in debugging tactics to fix those errors. All right, so let's get started. Uh, reporting. Reporting options is right here. This is which results you want to report. The first step is to either click nodes, links, or subcatchments. These are different tabs up here. And by default, it's going to report all the subcatchments, hence the checkbox here for all subcatchments, and all the links and all the nodes. But for instance, say you only want to report a subset of all the nodes. And what you do is go ahead and uncheck all the nodes and then select the node like junction J3 and then click on the add button. And J3 has now been added to this list of junctions or nodes that we want to have reported on. We'll do the same thing for junction four and add junction. What is this? Junction five and add. So, oops, looks like I added junction three twice. Right, click on junction four and then add. Okay, so to remove a junction, I select it and then I click remove. I can remove all of them by just clicking the clear button and then they're all gone. The same is true for uh, links and subcatchments. I'm going to report all the results though. So I'll just leave this all links, all nodes, and all subcatchments. Check box checked. There's three check boxes down below at the bottom of this dialog box. Those are report input summary. So let me move this over here. What that does is it will report the input values as part of the output report. Next down is report control actions. This is if you want to report a list of all the control actions that were taken during the simulation. And then lastly, we have report average results. And that will be for reporting the average value during a time period, as opposed to if you leave it unchecked, the default is to report the instantaneous value at the end of a time period. So that's the difference there. All right. So that is it for reporting options. The next option down here in the last one in this list is events for event options. Use this form to restrict hydraulic analysis to particular time periods. Hydraulics will remain constant outside of these time periods. So what this is, is if you have a long continuous simulation that takes a long time to run, but you only really need to focus on a certain time period, then you can specify what is that start and end date time range that you're interested in. And only during that date time range that you specify will a full unsteady hydraulic analysis be performed. To add entries to this list box, you're going to use the controls down below. So say, for instance, I'll just say June 30th, 2016. It'll start at zero hundred hours and then it'll go up to six hundred hours like that, which uh, six a.m. is what I mean. And then if you click the replace event that will add it to the list, it will basically replace the current highlighted row with the contents that are in the form fields. So if I wanted to overwrite these values, I would just go ahead and change these numbers, click replace event button. They'll get updated. But if I wanted to add a new date time range to the list, I'll go ahead and select the empty row right here and then add my numbers and then click replace event. Okay. I can also delete an individual event. If I select that event, click delete event or the delete all events button will delete all the records in this list box. All right, now we're ready to run a simulation. So to do that, I'll just click on this lightning bolt button right here. Boom, simulation has been run. So I'll click OK. 
Another way to run the simulation is to go up to project and then run simulation or click uh, press the F9 button on your keyboard. And then again, he, the simulation was so fast, it's already done. We didn't have to wait for a progress bar, which may be the case. In fact, if I bring up the user's manual, here is a dialogue which will come up onto the screen during the computations. It'll say computing right here. You'll see a progress bar going across the way. And then you'll see the simulated day, number of days and hours that have already completed. You can stop the simulation during the computation if you want by clicking the stop button. And you can also minimize the run status window. If you do click stop, you'll still have access to view the results up until the moment that you stop the simulation. There is also a status colored flag down in the status bar. So let me click OK. We'll come back to those numbers in a moment. We have a green flag that's showing right now. That means that results are current. The simulation has run and the results from that simulation are consistent with the model inputs. However, say for instance, I changed some model parameters here then the flag would turn yellow because the model results don't accurately reflect the inputs of the current model. So to do that, I'll just make a small change here. I'll increase this, this subcatchment S2 size. What is it? 4.74, have a 4.741. And when I click enter to, to change that area, the flag should become yellow. Okay, so now it's yellow. And if you were noticing earlier in the lesson, before I ran the simulation, it was a white flag which means that there is uh, no data because no simulation has been run yet. Uh, lastly, a red flag means that there is an error message. Speaking of errors, let's talk about troubleshooting. When a simulation terminates prematurely due to an error, the status report will describe the error. So the status port report is report and status. There's all sorts of numbers and results right here. We'll get to that in just a little bit. The user's manual in the end, which is back in Appendix E, lists out errors and warning messages. So we have everything from memory allocation error to elevation drop exceeds length for conduit such and such error. Uh, there's about 10 pages of errors if you go through this PDF file. And if you don't have the PDF file, that's fine. You can just go up to Help, User's Guide, and then in this left menu, click on the plus next to References to expand, and then click on Error Messages. The error messages here are categorized by their type. There's runtime errors, property errors, and so on. So let's go ahead and look at a few. These are some property errors. Each error includes a error number and then an error title, as well as a description. Some of these titles have the XXX to basically be placeholders for specific IDs. For instance, subcatchment XXX is actually going to be the name of the, the subcatchment ID, unless, you know, Perhaps the ID is XXX, but you get it what I mean. So here we have invalid length for a conduit such and such. If the conduit length is zero or a negative number, then um, you would get that error. It would tell you exactly what to change. So that's pretty straightforward. I scroll down a little further here, and here's another one. Node such and such has more than one outlet link. So this could help um, new modelers understand how EPA SWIM is expected to structure the network. No, a node cannot have more than one outlet link. And then here's another one, divider such and such does not have two outlet links. So it's expecting a divider to have two and exactly two outlet links. Let's see, we have format errors. There's also file errors. File errors are related to files, of course. So for instance, if your file cannot be opened or it cannot be written to, for instance, uh, privileges are not allowed for the particular user, that could be a problem. Also, the file itself, if it's being used as input data, perhaps the format of the file contents is not valid. So you could get an error that says something like that as well. Also, there are continuity errors. So let me go ahead and close this and then run the simulation again. We see these continuity errors listed out after a successful simulation run message. We have surface runoff, flow routing, and quality routing. All of these errors are very small and definitely below the tolerance for most users. But if your continuity error is much larger, say larger than 10%, it's really up to the modeler to decide what's a, an acceptable percent error on some of these parameters. But at that point, it may be worth looking at to the some of the details of your model. Because just because you see a successful model run, that just means that there were no runtime errors, but you could still have bad data based on incorrect input data or perhaps some instabilities. I'm going to go back to that report 
status. And then scroll down a little bit in this report and we'll see some of those continuity numbers again. So runoff quality continuity, the last record here shows a percentage of continuity error. It's zero, so that's pretty good. <laughs> it doesn't get better than zero error. Continuity error here is 0 0.01. This is a percentage, even though this says acre feet, so be careful about that. And then quality routing continuity, continuity error is 1.039, and that's a percentage. So these percentages are basically comparing the initial value plus the inflow compared to the final value plus the outflow. So the inflow and outflow is taking place during the simulation. And again, it's kind of up to the modeler to decide what constitutes an error. The error is typically caused by a time step that is too large or conduits that are too small. If we scroll down further, there is a table or a section in this report that says highest flow instability indexes right here. This is going to identify any links that are unstable. So right here, it's telling me all links are stable. This is probably not the best example. But what you'll notice in the user's manual is, there we go, found the right page, is we have two different plots of a hydrograph. The blue solid line is a problem. It's called fixed time step with an FII of 100. Again, that's the flow instability index. That's a problem. But then the red dotted line, that's variable time step, no instability, FII score equals zero. So this particular conduit could have been flagged in this report right here. After the time step was changed, it could have resulted in this red dotted line to fix the errors that were encountered during the simulation with the fixed time step where we had this instability. From our model results, we can generate plots like this just as well. So for instance, we know that there's a problem in conduit C5. If we go up to report and then graph, we can use profile reports, time series reports, or scatter plots, or these are graphs, excuse me, graph a profile, time series, or scatter plot. I'm gonna go ahead and click on time series here. And it looks like I already have link C5 selected because I prepared for this, but say it wasn't there. You, what you do is you click add, you select link, you select C5. You can also select a different link like right here. This is C8, it automatically populated into the object name. So that's nice and convenient. And then specify the variable, so flow, and then click accept, and then click okay. It generates that plot. And now we don't have any instability here. This is a fairly smooth, hydrograph where we have the flow rate versus the time for the six hour simulation. But say for instance, we did find some instabilities. The user's manual mentions a few different ways to reduce the instability. This is specifically under the dynamic wave routing is where you're going to have these numerical instabilities most often. And those are to reduce the routing time step. So let me go ahead and go to the options and then time steps right here. Currently the time step is set to 15 seconds, but you can go ahead and reduce this. Number two is utilizing the variable time step option. So in the dynamic wave tab right here, if you click on this checkbox, which looks like it was already checked on, then the time step will start at the default time step of whatever's here, 15 seconds, and then decrease down to the minimum of whatever number you set here, which is 0.5 seconds. All right, number three is to ignore inertial terms in the momentum equation. That's up here at the top, inertial terms. You can either keep them, ignore them, or dampen. Now they were set to dampen for this model, but you can ignore them. That will improve your chance of stability. And then lastly, artificially lengthen the short conduits, which is right here. Time step for conduit lengthening. It is in units of seconds. If it's set to zero, that means there's no artificial lengthening. So if you just change this to a larger time step in seconds, then that will, again, improve your chance of stability. Well, that's it for this lesson. What we talked about was reporting results, event periods, running the simulation, and then reviewing some results and looking at some of the potential errors and ways to avoid them.